Uh, yeah, thank you, Kate. Thank you, Tim. And thanks to the Linux Foundation for putting on such a great event. Um, uh, yeah, so as Kate mentioned, uh, Google made the decision to switch our embedded controller implementation from a homegrown RTOS over to Zephyr about two and a half years ago. And today I want to talk a little bit like how what Google's journey has been with Zephyr and how we found like collaboration has worked within the Zephyr community. Um, so what am I hoping you're going to take away from today's talk? Uh, I hope you might be inspired to start contributing to Zephyr, uh, or maybe you're going to start collaborating in a new area to you. Um, and then also, you know, myself and my team at Google, we're just trying to make some new friends. You know, so Google is a large company, uh, but even at Google scale, we can't invent and, and uh, implement everything ourselves. Uh, so by switching over to Zephyr, we were able to leverage a lot of the great features and capabilities that are in Zephyr today, uh, device tree in particular. Uh, this reduced a lot of the custom C code that we had to create for every Chromebook model. And we also adopted Zephyr's test framework. And for our embedded controller application, we increased our unit test coverage of our application from only 30% lines of code to over 90% lines of code. And you know the community has been great. Uh, they've been very eager and willing uh, to collaborate on new features. So uh, let me walk you through kind of the story of one of our very first contributions with Zephyr. Uh, so very early on, we added a new fuel gauge driver into the Zephyr uh, source tree. And we incorporated this into the existing sensor framework, much like all the other fuel gauge drivers. Uh, however, about a year later, I got a direct message on Discord that asked, you know, why didn't Google promote a battery API that we already use on Chromebooks today and that you could see in our open source RTOS. And the short answer was, you know, this first driver we had was really kind of testing the waters with Zephyr. We want to see how easy or hard the Zephyr community is, is to actually work with. We obviously like what we found, we like the community, and that was a big part of our decision to switch over to Zephyr. Um, and if you're wondering, you know, who was it that asked uh, if we could add this new API, uh, you were all introduced to Anas yesterday. He was, you know, kind of number one contributor into Zephyr. I think it's close to 5,000 commits into Zephyr. Um, so I shared Anas's request internally, and we started scoping out the work for how we might upstream our battery API into, uh, into Zephyr. We started with a very, fairly small PR focused just on battery fuel gauge, got some good feedback about how to structure our APIs, make it look more like other Zephyr APIs. And we also got some other requests, like maybe we should also add a charging chip API, or we should also have like a thread that helps manage all this stuff together. So we realized it'd be good to kind of step back and sketch out and show what might a full implementation look like uh, that's going to have a battery in its system. So we recre uh, created a request for comment, RFC, up, up on, uh, on GitHub, and it includes this block diagram here that includes kind of all this future work that we could be doing. So a power supply sys subsystem, plus these two new APIs for a battery fuel gauge and a charger chip. But just as important as sketching out what the end goal is, uh, we also define what the minimum viable product or MVP is, uh, could be for this effort. This allowed us and the reviewers to kind of focus just on the fuel gauge API that you see down here in the lower left. And any features or requests that were kind of out of scope of that, we could defer and just avoid the feature creep. So how does the scaling actually work within Zephyr? So, you know, Google created this RFC uh, and this PR, and we iterated on these until they got merged. Um, so then at that point, we could then start extending the, the own, our own implementation up in Zephyr. But because this MVP is now in tree, the gate is open for other collaborators to start contributing. So in parallel, Intel made their own changes to the battery fuel gauge API. Then we had an individual community, uh, contributor from the Zephyr community, not affiliated with any company, that added yet another battery fuel gauge driver. And in this case, they're fitting it into this brand new, new, brand new framework that we're creating. Uh, Cirrus Logic uh, made their own contribution. They created an ROC and a PR for the charging chip API. Microsoft joined the party with their own changes to the battery fuel gauge API. And then here just last week, I thanks, uh, made uh, their own contribution with another battery fuel gauge driver. 
And I should note, you know, the companies of Cirrus Logic and Micros, uh, Microsoft and iThinks, this represented their very first contribution into the Zephyr project. You know, so this instance really demonstrates kind of the power and the scaling that you get out of Zephyr. Um, and, you know, having more contributors, more companies contribute, you know, results in a more feature rich um, and more flexible imp implementation. And, and for this particular case, it was great to see the diversity that we had, right? We had uh, multiple large companies, a medium company, a small company, plus an individual, individual contributor all making contributions. Uh, you know, another thing I want to touch upon, another area of collaboration uh, that Google is working on is around sensors. Uh, you know, so sensors have been kind of part of the DNA for Zephyr for a long, long time. And there's like over 140 drivers in the tree right now. Uh, but there's been some limitations. There's been some asks to make improvements here. Um, and so this is just a few issues that I was able to find uh, up on in the Zephyr project now that are open. And if you even look at the, the last issue list, listed here, this was opened all the way back in 2017, uh, asking, you know, can we make the sensor, uh, sensors more performant? Uh, and this was even opened by Anas as well. Uh, so about a year ago, Google and Intel uh, started a collaboration work uh, to improve sensors. So, you know, here's a simplified view of sensors today. Uh, an application talks directly to the uh, sensor driver API, and it just fetches sensor readings one by one. Um, so recently, uh, Yuval at Google uh, made a couple uh, key additions to this driver API. Uh, so the first was an asynchronous read mode, which simplifies how applications can talk to these sensors. And then he also added a streaming API that uh, allows you to uh, fetch samples uh, from high bandwidth sensors. And this also added time stamping into sensor readings. And then both of these built upon the great real-time IO services that was authored by Tom at Intel. And then in, par um, in parallel, uh, Intel has been working on adding a new sensing subsystem. And this includes some great features of adding timestamps to all readings, uh, multiple client support. You can create virtual sensors that build upon uh, multiple physical sensors. And then there's arbitration and control over sampling rates. And the very first PR for the sensing subsystem merged just last week. And this all builds on uh, the great, uh, all the great sensor drivers that are in tree now. And you know, make sure you check out the uh, virtual talk from Hibu and Ken. Uh, that goes into a lot more detail, and I think they actually had a pretty successful uh, virtual office hours yesterday on this topic as well. Uh, so some other things Google's working to upstream. Uh, we're working on upstreaming some ACPI power sequencing. Uh, this is going to manage all the power states of an application processor, and it's going to support uh, x86 and ARM. And this is another collaboration effort that we're working on with Intel. And for those in Zephyr, you're probably uh, familiar with Fabio. Uh, he was one of the release managers for Zephyr 3.2. And he's been hard at work at adding an input subsystem into Zephyr. And uh, hopefully you were able to check out his talk yesterday. And, uh, and then on USB power delivery, uh, Google has added and landed uh, both the sync only and source only modes of power delivery. And uh, some Googlers, Diana and Sam, uh, put together a great virtual talk that walk you through the entire process of adding USB power delivery to your Zephyr application. Um, all right, so, you know, as, as I mentioned at the top, we've been doing this for about two and a half years, working on Zephyr. And, you know, actually launching a Chromebook does take some time. But our partners, uh, starting the beginning of this year, actually are now shipping Chromebooks that are using Zephyr on the embedded controller. Uh, and this is just a sample of four devices that are on sale now uh, that do include Zephyr as part of the implementation. And basically, Chromebooks, uh, all Chromebooks launched in 2013 or later, or uh, excuse me, 2023 and later, are going to include uh, Zephyr as part of the implementation. And so where else is Google uh, trying to use Zephyr? Uh, the first thing is Pigweed. Uh, Pigweed is a collection of open source libraries developed by a team at Google, and it really targets doing better and faster firmware development. And we're uh, in the process of trying to get uh, Pigweed adopted as an official Zephyr module so that uh, Zephyr application developers can kind of pick and choose the components that are going to work in their system. Uh, we have a couple virtual talks from Al and Yuval that talk about some of the integration you can do between Pigweed and Zephyr. 
And then uh, a lot of Chromebooks also have a fingerprint sensor. Uh, we have uh, recently started work to port our fingerprint firmware over to Zephyr as well. And this really helps future-proof our fingerprint design, uh, making it a lot easier to switch to new MCUs in the case of supply chain problems. And we also have a couple hardware debug tools uh, that are based off Zephyr. Uh, USB Type-C ports, reliable operation of those is very critical to the user experience in Chromebooks. So we developed our own, uh, our own power delivery, USB power delivery analyzer, internally that we call Twinkie. Um, uh, the latest version of this, Twinkie V2, is uh, based off Zephyr, and we're in the process of adding the board support files for, for Twinkie into the Zephyr tree. And then finally, we have the Chameleon board. Uh, this is an emulator uh, for testing external displays with Chromebooks, and we do a lot of compatibility testing with this. Uh, Paul uh, from Google had a great talk uh, that goes into a lot, a lot of detail. Uh, that, that talk happened on Tuesday, uh, but if you want to know more about the Chameleon, be sure to just uh, seek out and find Paul here at ZDS. Um, and then we have, uh, you know, I mentioned some of these before, uh, but we had some other Googlers that were not able to travel to Prague. Uh, but be sure to look up, uh, you know, Yuval, Al, Diana, and Sam, either up on uh, GitHub or Discord if you have questions about their talks, or maybe if you want to contribute. And um, in terms of in-person sessions, uh, it's day three, so the only session left that you can attend live is Aaron's talk on peripheral emulation, but I do encourage you to check that out. And then how to help. So, you know, where is Google trying to make some new friends? Um, sensors. Uh, you know, the work we've been doing here with Intel, it's going really well. But Intel and Google, our use cases are really focused on laptops. So uh, we'd like some other people from the community to start uh, helping out here. I'm sure there's some other great use cases and applications that have some good ideas uh, to, make this, to make the sensors even better. And on the input subsystem, Fabio's kind of been a one-man show here. Uh, so if we could get some help, uh, you know, maybe one thing is uh, adding ZBus in, into uh, this part of, uh, as part of the implementation. And then finally for testing, you know, this is something that I think everybody in the project needs to help out on. Um, testing on real hardware is very expensive. And I don't have your hardware to test with and you don't have mine. So uh, introducing regressions, you know, can happen pretty easily. And, you know, within the embedded space, test is probably thought of as maybe a four-letter word. You know, let's, let's get rid of that. Um, and so, you know, I think a great goal, uh, you know, a really big, hairy, audacious goal for Zephyr would be that we would have emulators and tests for every single driver uh, within, within Zephyr. Uh, so uh, that's all I've got. Thank you very much, uh, and have a great day.